If you are watching my video for the first time, please do subscribe to my channel to stay updated with my videos. Also, don't forget to like and share this video. Hi, welcome to Teach Maker channel. Thank you for joining for the Excel training session. So in this video, I am coming with a new Excel tracker template for tracking your issues. So let's get started. So what this issue tracker template consists of. So on the screen, what you're seeing right now is the status of the issues. So the status of the issues, I have plotted them into three different charts. One is bugs by priority, bugs by status, bugs by release, and there is also an another text box called as summary. So now where do you find issues so issues you would find them whenever you are testing any particular software or a hardware in any industry so as a tester if you would want to log your issues or record them and also you would want to have the status to monitor what is the status of the issue whether it is closed or whether it is still in open or whom it is assigned to so in those instances you want to have a sort of tracker where you want to log these issues and record them in your systems so i hope this is where your issue tracker template would help you out or rescue in you in such situations where you want to have this sort of template readily available so let's get started so what sort of data i have put in into this issue tracker template so let's get started so now in this issue tracker template so i have three worksheets prepared for this so one worksheet what you're seeing on my screen right now this is called as a status uh, worksheet which or where I have categorized the issues by plotting three different charts. One chart it would be bugs for priority, and another chart it would be bugs by status, and lastly the bugs by release. So these charts would be automatically populated, so you need not worry about anything how to plot this chart or any way sort of. So these charts would be automatically getting populated from the data that you. Put it. and another thing so there is something called as a summary so summary would help any of the person that want to demonstrate the status of the issues so in those cases also it would help so that the summary would give a sort of information in a very crisp uh, manner as well so I have just put, put in certain uh, word format information here saying there are two critical issues identified two issues have been closed and two issues are still in open so these statements also are automatically populated so you need not worry anything about writing or generating the statements here as well so now let me show you how i am generating this data or the chart but where am i putting the data so let's get started so there is another worksheet that i want to show you called as data worksheet so, that, so that's the first worksheet that uh, you would have to have a look on so in this sheet what i have done is i have put in certain fields here called as company name department project name defect manager name as well so there are four rows or fields here that you would need to enter the data here like for example there may be a company name that you want to use this excel template for or the department name that you're working for or where you are being assigned to and the project name for which you want to record these issues or plot these issues and if you are the tester or you are the one who manages the defects right from uh, testing or assigning or tracking or monitoring those issues that you can put in your name as defect manager here. 
So other uh, fields as issue category status priority that you see at the bottom here. So these are actually the options either you can write on your uh, options based on your need or what sort of attributes you want to use it. So issue category would tell me how am I categorizing my issues whether it is software or hardware or mechanical or system. So you can change your uh, issue categories here. Similarly, I have just put in based on the life cycle of the issue. So I've just put in it from open, under analysis, fixed, resolved, and closed. So these would be my status of my issues. And the next one is the priority of the issues. So how do you want to handle the issues or, to, or take them to closure or to take an action upon? So that would be the priority. I have categorized them into critical, high, medium, and low. So you can change these fields, any of these fields under these issue category status or priority based on your need. And the next one is column M, N, P, and Q. So these columns are uh, basically calculating the the uh, uh, categories or the priorities the status automatically so that's for that purpose so uh, you need not touch them because these are uh, helpful for calculation and plotting the charts okay. so let's move to the issue tracker worksheet where the actual work happens so now on the status uh, uh, sheet you were seeing certain uh, charts which were already been displayed so it was because of the data that you were seeing here uh, being put in from row number 8 until row number 12 so there were two critical issues and uh, one high medium and low priority issues and two were open state issues and one was fixed one was resolved and one was closed so now let's get into deeper what each of these fields or attributes would mean to you and how you would want to use them. So now the first sheet when I went, I went to the data sheet where I asked you to put in certain fields or rows as project name, defect manager, the department and other sort of things. So when you enter those details there, it would automatically get populated here what you see on the row 4 and row 5 where this it is the project name and defect manager name and department name so this would automatically get populated from row number 4 and 5 you need not worry anything about that so now let's get uh, deeper into what each of these attributes in this table would give you information of. So issue ID, so this column, it would automatically get generated. I will show you that how that gets automatically generated. So each issue ID will have as bug underscore the number. So you need not worry anything about it. It automatically gets generated as and when you start logging your issues. So the next column C which is issue description so this is where you will type the description of the issue or what is the issue that you have identified and the next one is the category of the issue so these are actually the drop downs so category of the issue it may be if you are testing software whether you are testing system whether you are testing hardware or mechanical or any sort of things so these are the categories of the issues where you have identified and feature may be anything specific related to the feature or the module that you have identified this particular issue so you can mention that as well and the next one is priority priority as i said earlier so these i have categorized them based on the uh, priority that you need to take action for uh, fixing the particular issue you can set them either as critical high medium and low or whatever uh, the way that you have uh, identified that you want to take them to action and the next one is assignee column so this assignee column is the one who will actually fix this particular issue that you have identified and report column is the one you are logging or the one who has identified this particular issue so 
that is the reported name that is Ethereum. Yeah. And found in release. So this release, it may be a software release which would have been a build that would have been generated. Uh, so that is this particular found in release where you have identified this issue when testing. <coughs> and status column again so these status column again is a drop down where it will have these sort of other options and finally the column k and column l state status updated by and status updated on and finally column m which is notes so if you have any additional information regarding a particular issue you can write them as particular notes here and as so now let me show you how the issue can be locked for your reference so now let's get started as i said earlier i need not put anything into the issue id column i just need to type in into the column c which is issue description so now just for typing purpose i will write it as issue six so this should be my description or i will write it as failure in UI display so I just put it as failure UI display so that would be my description so if I just move to the next column so you will see the issue ID automatically got generated here at row number 13 and column B which is mug underscore 6 so now category I will select it as software and feature it would be UI so that would be my feature and uh, based on the issue description failure in the UI display and uh, I can select the priority as critical you can further give details in the issue description itself based on the way that you want to have a format and assignee at the moment I will just give some names here as Ajay and a reporter i will put it as amit so now so think if i am testing x.2 software then i will select it as x.2 software version and then when i am recording the issue now or logging the issue now in my tracker so then the initial state of the issue it will be under open so then i will select it as open state did you notice one more thing what happened in column k and column l so in column k and column l it automatically put in the name as user and it entered the date as today's date with the current time so now what actually happens here is whatever state you would select in the column j the status updated by it would take the system name of the particular user so that it would automatically populate here and also the date and time of when this issue has been logged so this would be helpful so that you know when the issue has been actually locked in or created in case if you are placing this excel template somewhere in the sharepoint or you are sharing via your onedrive or you know any shared location so in those cases it would actually help others also to know who has actually locked this issue and who would have updated the status it would automatically get updated there so now let me go back to the status sheet sheet and then show you how this data is automatically being populated please do note i have entered my issue in the zone number 30 to identify that earlier there were two critical issues and now the third one has popped in here and earlier there were two open issues and now i have put in one more which will be three open issues so now let me let me go to the status sheet and show you how it would be looking did you see that the chart automatically got populated here so earlier as i said there were two critical issues so now the one which i have locked in so the chart in the bugs by priority the first chart it automatically increased to three which is 50 percent of 
this uh, pie chart and uh, the next chart is bugs by status so here also there were two open issues which were marked in red so now you will see three issues here so now one more thing i want to show you here is there is the last chart as bugs by release please do note x.1 is having one issue x.2 is having two issues x.3 is having three issues so now have to look in the issue data sheet so x.2 x.3 is having three x.1 is having one x.2 is having two so let me go back to the status sheet are both the same x.2 is having two did you see that even the chart here in the bugs by release got updated automatically and the next one is the summary sheet or the summary table here so these statements are also automatically being populated you need not worry about anything now it is just telling a summary as there are three critical issues which are in identified state and three issues have been closed and three issues are still in open so it would automatically populate the status as well in the summary text box here so i hope this excel template for issue tracking for your testing activity or in your testing life cycle it might help you or save a lot of your time in preparing or logging the issues right from end to end until you track or monitor the issues and take the status to your respective stakeholders as well so finally uh, there is also a cover sheet which i have just uh, put in here in the first page so this is the issue tracker cover page so whatever you put in in the data worksheet it will automatically get populated here so you need not worry anything about it and as and when you perform the testing of your software or whenever you log the issues or you make any changes to have the document version history you can also maintain them here in the row number 16 and uh, uh, where it is date and the change my uh, made by which would be the author of this particular document who is maintaining it and you can also note your remarks as well as what change has been made in this particular sheet excel tracking sheet so i hope this uh, issue tracker excel template video was very informative to you I hope this would also save you a lot of time if you start using it, if you want to start using it right away. So this would be a very helpful tool for you. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos like these. Thank you. Bye-bye.